Hi, my name's Hope, and today I'm interviewing Jane Goodall, one of the world's most famous conservationists who has studied chimpanzees for her whole life and has also started a really cool organization called Roots and Shoots for Kids to help get involved with saving the planet. Tell me about you first. What's well, your name? Well, my name's Hope, and I'm 12 years old, mm -hmm. and I'm from London. Okay. And I love pee and I love drama. Oh, I see. And, um, oh, you're a budding star. That's your yes. future. <laughs> I see. Okay. And I know that you went to, is it Combi? Combi. Yeah. That's right. And you went there, was it 1960s you went there first? Well, well it, it started a bit before that. Yeah. So the thing was that when I was 10, yeah. which is two years younger than you, yeah. I had a dream. Mm -hmm. so you're dreaming of, of um, showbiz sort of thing. Yeah. I was dreaming of going to Africa and living with animals and writing books about them. And the reason I had that dream is when I was 10, mm -hmm. I found this little book called Tarzan of the Apes. Oh. And I read it from cover to cover up my favorite tree, which is still in the garden. <laughs> and so that's when I decided I would grow up, go to Africa, live with wild animals and write books about them. And everybody laughed at me. How would I do that? We didn't have any money. Africa was still the dark continent. Mm -hmm. The war was raging yeah. and I was just a girl. Yeah. So everybody laughed at me and said, Jane, get real, dream about something you can achieve. Mm -hmm. Not my mother. She said, if you really want something, you're going to have to work very hard, take advantage of opportunity and never give up. And so I got there, saved up money. Being a waitress took me a long time to save the money up. I finally did. I went by boat because there were no planes going back and forth back then and heard about Louis Leakey. He gave me a job because I knew so much about animals, even though I'd never been to Africa. I used to spend hours in the Natural History Museum reading books about Africa. So when I went to see Leakey, I was all ready <laughs> for that opportunity. Yeah. I could answer most of his questions. Wow. So that's how it worked. It didn't just fall into my lap out of the blue with no preparation. And so when you got there, you didn't go with very much, did you? You had very yes, little binoculars. Right. Very little money. Who was going to say, oh, we'll give money, here's this young girl. She's never <laughs> been to, to, to university. She doesn't have a degree. But eventually he found a wealthy American businessman who said, okay, here's money for six months. We'll see how she does. <laughs> and the next problem, the authorities in what was then Tanganyika, it's now Tanzania. A girl on her own in the forest, <laughs> we won't take responsibility. But in the end, they said, but she's got to have a companion. So who came? Same amazing mother. She came for four of those six months. She supported me. She was there, you know, I got depressed because the chimps ran away all the mm. time. And she said, but Jane, up on that peak, you're learning more than you think. I remember on reading about you on your website that you said there was a time when you hid behind a bush and you saw one of them with a friend and they were like making tools to catch stuff. Yes, Isn't that well, right? that was, um, it was just after my mother had left. So I'd been there mm -hmm. four months yeah. and one chimpanzee had begun to lose his fear before the others. Yeah. And he was very distinctive, he had this white beard <laughs> and I called him David Greybeard. <laughs> And so on this particular day, I was walking along a trail and it'd been raining and I was pretty miserable. Yeah. And I suddenly saw this dark shape crouched over a termite mound. And I saw him reach out and pick a stem of grass and push it down into the termite mound and pick off the termites that were biting on. Yeah. And I knew he was using a tool. And not only were they picking grasses and using them, but they were picking leafy twigs and removing the leaves, which is making. And at that time, it was thought that humans and only humans use and make tools. And we were known as man the tool maker. That's how we were defined. So when I t sent a telegram to Lewis Leakey, yeah. I knew he'd be so excited. <laughs> and he said, well, we shall have to redefine man, yeah. redefine tool or accept chimpanzees as human. So here's yeah. the question for your generation to answer. Yeah. How is it possible that the most intellectual creature that's ever walked on planet Earth is destroying it so quickly? It's, it's our only home. 
and the message that you're sending across, not, not to think about it in the bigger picture, but to sometimes just shorten it down to a little thing and zoom in on it and just think, what can I do? Here. What can I do right here, right yeah. now? And yeah. that's why Roots and, you've made Roots and Streets. Right. And now there's hundreds and hundreds of young people doing it here and then Wow, we're doing it all over the world. Yeah. 139 countries. Which is remarkable. Yes. So thank you so, so much. So please join us, help us, because you are one of these young leaders in the making. Thank you. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was so great meeting Jane and learning from all her experience about how we can make a difference in this world. <laughs>